one. One of the men wanted in connection with the deadly shooting of a teenager in Louisville is now in custody. Police Chief L. M. Claiborne says 19-year-old Jordan Miller turned himself in this afternoon and faces a charge of accessory after the fact in the murder of 17-year-old Tylen Glenn. 20-year-old Isaiah Riggins, the suspected shooter in this case, remains on the run and is believed to be armed and dangerous. The shooting happened Saturday night on Mount Moriah Circle in Louisville. Claiborne says Riggins is believed to be in Louisville or in the Golden Triangle area. If you have any information on his whereabouts or on this case, call the Louisville Police Department or Winston County Crime Stoppers. The Winston County Coroner says Tylen Glenn was killed after being shot multiple times at close range while sitting inside a vehicle. Our Jory Talley joins us in the studio now with the very latest on the investigation. Louisville Police responded to a shots fired call a little after 9 on Saturday night. Chief L.M. Claiborne says when officers arrived to the scene, they started gathering evidence and information. 17-year-old Tylen Glenn lost his life this past Saturday here in the neighborhood of Mount Moriah Circle in Louisville. Police Chief L.M. Claiborne says this was not an act of random violence. What it appears to be some type of domestic violence situation that is uh, going to the extreme, taking the worst possible imaginary turn. Uh, and that's about all the information that we're prepared to release at this time on the case. Investigators say Tylen was shot and killed while sitting in a vehicle. The evidence from the investigation reveals that uh, the victim was seated in the passenger seat of a vehicle. The vehicle was also occupied by a, a female that was driving and a small child in the back seat. Chief Claiborne says that's when the accused shooter, 20 year old Isaiah Riggins, approached the passenger side and fired shots at Tylen. The Winston County coroner told WCBI that Riggins is the father of the woman's child. The officer were able to recover at the scene a one nine millimeter handgun. Uh, and some spent shell cases. Louisville resident Diane Shedd says she was saddened by the death of Tylen, who was a student at Louisville High School. He was a nice little kid in school and everything. His mom is very sweet to me. His grandma, I work with her and everything. They were very loving people. Shedd says stuff like this isn't supposed to happen. These little young kids today, they really need to wake up. Life is getting too short for all this you know, just jab what they doing. I was told earlier today that the high school is working with the student body to help with this tragedy. I reached out to the high school principal about some of those efforts, but he declined to talk to us. Also reached out to the superintendent several times, but never heard back from him. A Boonville man is accused of assaulting a disabled woman. 28-year-old James Baxter Barron was arrested last Thursday. For abuse of a vulnerable person, the reported victim is a 63-year-old disabled woman. After his arrest, Prentice County deputies tacked on another charge after Barron was reportedly found in possession of a controlled substance. Bond is set at $10,000. The man charged with shooting and killing an Oxaby County nightclub owner pleads guilty. Cedric Carter pled guilty to second degree murder in Noxaby County Circuit Court today. Carter was arrested in December 2016 after shooting 34 year old Andre, un, Andrew Sherrod. Sherrod was shot outside of his business, Cashy Sports Bar and Grill. Sheriff Terry Grassery says Carter got into an argument with his girlfriend and Sherrard asked him to leave. The men went outside the night spot and shots were fired. D'Angelo Martin was also injured during that shooting. An arrest today in connection with last month's social media threat that practically shut down New Hope schools. Investigators have a juvenile in custody. The name of the suspect is not being released due to their age, but the teen is being charged with cyber stalking. Chief Deputy Mark Miley says several interviews were conducted and forensic analysis performed on several devices. Law enforcement also sent a subpoena to Facebook to get information. The single threat started circulating on social media on February 25th. A number of juveniles were interviewed and more arrests are possible. 
With the evolution of technology and popularity of social media, investigators in our area say they're seeing an increase in cybercrime cases. Investigators say it can be difficult to work these cases. Lowndes County Detective Tony Cooper says the first thing they look for is the internet provider's address for the user, and then a subpoena is issued to the app or the company which has the site to request records and the IP address of the user. That information then allows investigators to zero in on the device and help them find a suspect. With the way things are nowadays, one set of records for three days was 1,400 and something pages. Somebody has to sit down and read each of those pages and find the information that you're looking for, uh, which we were able to do uh, during this investigation. Um, but yeah, it's time consuming. Once you get all the records in, uh, you have to make sure you're looking at the right records for the right person. Cooper says most companies in the U.S., such as Facebook, Snapchat, even Google, cooperate with investigators during these type of probes. Time now to get a first look at our forecast. We'll turn it over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Hey, Keith. Hey, Andrea. A bit gloomy out there today. This is a live look in Columbus and Tupelo with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Overcast conditions in about 90% of the area out west along I-55. We squeeze in some sunshine and it's warmer 60s out there, but most of us stuck underneath the clouds and we are in the 50s. The big picture shows the clouds a little bit tougher off to the east where the cooler temperatures are much warmer. Look at this. We got 74 in Jackson, 81 in Shreveport currently. So that's where the action is. Storms back to the west. That won't be in here until later this week. So lows tonight down into the 50s. The full forecast in just a few minutes. Some students know it as Construction State University. Little pun there, but Mississippi State University executives and trustees actually know it's just progress. The university's latest groundbreaking is for its six, uh, $67 million College View apartment complex. The apartment style Hello. complex adds over 650 beds to MSU housing. Also on the property, a brand new 7,000 square foot daycare center. It was only fitting that the children from the daycare helped to break ground there today. The same development is also capitalizing on a concept that's trending in many downtown areas. Buildings with ground floor retail and upper level apartments. The new complex will be the first of its kind on a Mississippi University campus. Our Parker King joins us live from the site with more on it. Parker. Thanks guys. This partnership is actually known as a public private partnership where a private organization can lease from a public agency, in this case a public university. Again, until now it's never been implemented in the state until now and the benefit it provides affects everyone that surrounds it. You're going to have residential on top of the retail space. Something like that has never been introduced to a Mississippi university, but three years ago Mississippi State President Dr. Mark Keenum saw the impact it had on the campus of the University of Kentucky. And that sparked an idea to bring back to Mississippi State, to our team here, to investigate, look into this. Is this an opportunity for us here at Mississippi State? By working with the city of Starkville and the state legislature, MSU will have a first of its kind living facility and the entire first floor is 46,000 square feet of retail space for restaurants, retail shops, fast casuals, things of that nature. And there's a big uh, promenade area in the in the middle of the project, which is uh, an opportunity for the art show, for the for the band, for the all kinds of uh, uh, promotional activities that the university may want to do. Mississippi State is one of a growing number of campuses choosing to lease their property to outside companies. You're seeing a lot more of these type of public-private partnerships. We call them P3s. And the great thing about them is that they fill the gap that a lack of state funding uh, is, is challenging the universities with. And when completed, Keenum says the complex will be a win win. That will serve our student needs, our university needs, but also the community at large. We're meeting with businesses, getting them excited about the Starkville market, and letting them know that there's an opportunity here at uh, Mississippi State. Representatives at EDR developers didn't give me any names, but did confirm that they're already working with some letters of intent of, of people who are trying to come to Mississippi State. The entire complex is not going to be complete until next summer, but will be done before the 2019 fall semester. Live in Starkville, Parker King, WCBI News.
Area Duffers take to the greens to raise some green for a local organization. We look in on the links when we come back. Watching WCBI News at 6 with Andrea Self and Joey Barnes. Welcome back. April will be a busy month for the Autism Center of North Mississippi as its team members, clients, and supporters encourage people to go blue. April is Autism Awareness Month, and the Autism Center is taking part in a campaign called Go Blue Mississippi. People are asked to challenge friends, coworkers, and others on social media to purchase special t shirts and wear blue in support of autism awareness. But a lot of businesses are getting creative, and that's what we love. Uh, Bancorp South, for instance, has sold hundreds of these t-shirts and they're also encouraging their employees to wear blue jeans and donate five dollars and all those proceeds are going to come to the Autism Center of North Mississippi. Next Monday Tupelo Parks and Rec will hold a hamburger cookout as a fundraiser for the Autism Center that will be at Fair Park and a 5k benefiting the center is planned for April the 7th that will be at Ballard Park. About 50 golfers hit the links for a good cause today. The annual Happy Irby Christmas Fund 2018 Charity Golf Tournament teed off today. The tournament raises money to buy Christmas gifts. The gifts are given each year to children who may not always see presents under the tree. Organizers say this golf tournament is one that can make a big impact. The project that we do is a needed one for our community of helping kids that are in need. Last year, the tournament raised enough money to give nearly 400 kids around the Columbus area a gift for Christmas. No rain on the links today, but it was breezy and cool. There's our live Doppler radar. No issues right now, but more rain likely the, later this week. Heavy rain possible, several inches perhaps. Full forecast is next. <laughs> Our first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. 59 degrees in the friendly city of Columbus, and a picture tells a thousand words. Look at this. You can see the water tower that is being repainted in Columbus, and we have some of that tarp right there flapping in the breeze. It has been windy all day long. Gusts up there about uh, sustained wind now, 50 miles per hour. Gusts high up on that water tower, uh, much. Uh, uh, more so in the 20s here as we've gone throughout the course of the afternoon. All right, wind speeds 10 to 15 sustained with some higher gusts across the region. We're in the 50s just off to the southwest. Those of you watching in Winona, yes, you've had the sun, you've had the 60s today. Back in the Delta, upper 70s now. They were in the 80s earlier today, still 81 in Shreveport. So there is some warm air not too far away. Upper 60s to low 70s in the region tomorrow afternoon. I think those low clouds will be very persistent tonight and also for the day tomorrow. We should bump back up into the 70s in all areas on Wednesday ahead of the next system coming our way. So for tonight, clouds fill back in. If you've had a little bit of clearing today, you will become overcast tonight. Staying breezy, low 50s out there. And here's our plan for Tuesday, 50s in the morning. And then by the afternoon, upper 60s to low 70s. If we see a little bit of sunshine, especially across our western areas, maybe a little bit warmer. Low, uh, lower temperatures back to the northeast, but a lot of cloud cover all day long for our Tuesday. And we are programming weather radios. Again, our next tour stop, Starkville, this Thursday, 4 to 6 at Kroger. And we have our next system coming on in for Wednesday and Thursday. Heavy rain potential is the big threat here, uh, but we may see a stronger storm Wednesday afternoon, especially across these areas in the Delta out towards Louisiana. And we're in the eastern fringe here, so uh, there could be some uh, gusty breezes, maybe a hailstone or two somewhere in the region here on Wednesday. But at this point, not a prolific severe weather event 
at this point. That's the way it's looking. But definitely some rainfall. Here comes the front. Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, and the Thursday, some heavy rain potential. And that should be out of here just in time for Easter weekend. We still think maybe one to four inches of rain here across our viewing area between Wednesday afternoon and Thursday night. So that is the big concern. Maybe some more flash flooding as we get into the next couple of days. Tomorrow we are dry, but the rain chances pick up by Wednesday afternoon. Very heavy rain possible into Thursday, Thursday night. Still some lingering showers possible Friday. At this point, though, Saturday, Sunday, your Easter weekend looking great. Highs in the 70s with a mix of sun and clouds. Oh, what a day it's been here in New York City. I'm outside of Madison Square Garden. We will have more with Mississippi State basketball, talk a little women's, talk a little men's, NIT, and some of the tournament. Next in sports. WCBI Sports with Robbie Donahoe is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Good evening. We welcome you back to the Big Apple, New York City, the city that never sleeps. We are here holding it down with Mississippi State men's basketball as they get set to take on Penn State in the NIT coming up tomorrow night from right behind me. That'll be Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. But tonight they're actually playing a hockey game inside. Rangers and Capitals going down in about, I don't know, five, six minutes or so. So if you see a little more foot traffic around me wearing red and blue, that's because you have a lot of Rangers fans getting ready for the Capitals game. But here we're talking basketball. Obviously, as you've heard by now, the Mississippi State women's basketball team headed back to the Final Four. They will take on Louisville on Friday in Columbus, Ohio. We've got the whole team ready to roll. We've got all sorts of great specials, interviews, and stuff coming down the way as we make our way up to the Buckeye State. So make sure you keep it locked here on WCBI Sports as we follow Hale State Hoops all the way to the national championship game. They won't have it easy. They're going to play Louisville in that first game in the Final Four and try to take down Asia during the Cardinals. But if there's a team that can make it back and go win the title this year, it's Vic Schaefer and this year's Mississippi State team. Keep an eye on that UConn-South Carolina game that's going on right now on ESPN as well. But we're talking Mississippi State men's basketball right now as the Bulldogs continue preparation for Penn State in the NIT, which will tip off tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. your time. The Bulldogs continued prep at Columbia University today as practice went underway. A very intense, very positive, uplifting practice. This is not your normal you know, pregame practice that you see from Mississippi State. They were intense. They were into the practice. You saw a couple of you know, forceful dunks. You saw Ben Howland very encouraging. It's, I mean, when you're around this Bulldog team, you really get a sense of this team uh, having a lot of positive reinforcement to what they are doing. But for MSU, they're, just, they're glad to be here in New York City, the concrete jungle where dreams are made of, and the Bulldogs are looking forward to the contest tomorrow night, but also just enjoying their time here in the New York City. I think for our players, many of them never having been to New York City, very exciting. You know, coming into Manhattan, you know, seeing the huge crowd and you know, the unbelievable uh, billboards here down in Times Square, uh, you know, it's very exciting for our young players and I'm really happy for them uh, to have this opportunity to play in Madison Square Garden, which is the mecca of basketball. Every great player ever has played this game, and we're really excited to have Bailey Howell with us and his wife because he played not only in this garden, he played in the old garden. And the uh, greatest player in the history of Mississippi State, bringing him to New York City again uh, to be here to support his team. It's really fun for me. It's exciting to be here in New York. I know this is some, the first time for some of the guys on the team being out here. So we're just looking forward to um, winning some basketball games while we're out here and enjoying New York City. The city is very beautiful. You know, it's a great experience for the whole team to get out here and to, you know, get to view this beautiful city and just come play the game we love. And we just want to come out, you know, give a get a Mississippi State Bulldog family something to be proud of and try to win the NIT. And the Bulldogs will take on Penn State in the NIT coming up tomorrow night again, 8.30 p.m. You can watch the game on ESPN. As, you, as Ben Howell mentioned, Bailey Howell is here in New York City, played with the New York Knicks, Knicks way back when, so it'll be good to have him along with Mississippi State uh, following along and watching MSU. Now, coming up at 10, we're going to get a chance to catch up with Rick Stansberry, former MSU head coach, is the head coach of Western Kentucky. They happen to be on the other side of the bracket. If both Western Kentucky and MSU win, they'll play in the NIT championship game Thursday. We'll have more on that coming up at 10. For now, reporting live here in NYC, Robbie Donahoe, WCBI Sports. We'll get a last look at your forecast when we come back. WCBI sports coverage of the men's NIT tournament is brought to you by OCH Regional Medical Center. Advanced medicine, compassionate care. 
Starkville Ford Lincoln, and visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Dry tomorrow, upper 60s, low 70s, a lot of cloud cover. Rain chances return probably Wednesday afternoon through Thursday. But this is Easter weekend. At this point, mm -hmm. we are anticipating a fair amount of sunshine and That's comfortable good. temperatures in the 70s. No problem Something with like the Easter to. egg hunts at all I don't this think weekend. So. Look great. You just got to watch out for that heavy rain during the yeah, Easter. If you don't float away by Thursday, <laughs> you should be okay <laughs> for <laughs> Easter. All the eggs <laughs> float away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hide them early. That's yeah, right. Wait until Saturday morning. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good night.